Hello everyone, this is Lorraine from Card Creations and today uh, I'd like to share with you uh, my knowledge of milk glass. I know a lot of people are collecting milk glass and uh, some are not sure of the brand or style of milk glass that they have. Now my pieces here are the ones that I collect and they're the higher end of milk glass. Uh, but if you search and get your magnifying glass out, you will be able to find some markings on some of the pieces, although some of the pieces are not marked, um, and I'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, uh, there are lots of makers of milk glass. There's Fenton, which is probably the most popular, Westmoreland, Anchor Hawking, E.O. Brady, Fostoria, Imperial glass, Indiana glass, Kemp glass, and a number of others. But uh, uh, this collection that I have here is just the Fenton and the Westmoreland. So I'll go ahead and get started on some of the pieces, and that way, if you have a piece like this, uh, you might be able to identify yours. Now, I am not an appraiser, and this is just research that I have done. Uh, on my own, looking through books and things like that. So uh, if I'm wrong on a piece, uh, let me know and uh, we'll just educate each other. So the first piece that I'm going to show you is, this is a Fenton piece. Let's see, I'm, I guess I'll move this and get started and just lay that there. And this is a Fenton piece. And... Um, uh, it is a 10 inch oblong planter by, uh, by Fenton and it's a hobnail uh, design and uh, Fenton was uh, discovered by two brothers and they produced their own glass uh, and they opened the uh, Fenton Art Glass Company in West Virginia in 1907 and it's still run by the Fenton family and they're on their fourth generation in 1939, the Crested Ware and the Hobnail debuted. In 2005, Fenton turned uh, 100 years old, so that's pretty amazing. Now, behind this piece is the Hobnail Hurricane Lamp. And I have a couple of those. Well, I have several lamps, so maybe I'll do a different video on different styles of lamps. But this is a hurricane lamp. And that's what it looks like lit up. And it's so pretty. I love to have these in my bedrooms or right here in my dining room. Now, this piece here is also by Fenton. And I'm going to move my camera back so you can get a better look. And this is referred to as the um, banana stand, a hobnail banana stand. And it's a pretty unique piece. It, uh, there's uh, cake plates that are similar to this, and it would be nice to have a uh, cake plate in the same design. Um, I also collect uh, uh, cake stands, but maybe I'll do a separate video. I might do several, but what I main, want, mainly wanted to do was focus on the Fenton and the uh, different, uh, the Fenton and the Westmoreland and different bowls and because I know a lot of you are collecting things for your candy stations. Okay, in 1939, the Crested Ware and Hobnail debuted. Uh, and, and I think I already said this, and in 2005, Fenton turned 100 years old. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the Fenton uh, uh, Crested Ware. Yes, this one. This is one of the pieces that I love to collect because of the design uh, and it's the Fenton Silver Crested uh, Spanish Lace 
and I'll bring this in closer so you can see the beautiful design that the vase has. And I have a couple pieces like that. I have, uh, I have actually have two of those vases, and then I just don't want to get in front of the camera. <laughs> Let's see, I've got two of those vases. And also this candy dish. And it's so beautiful. I just absolutely love it. I, um, and this is also the silver crested with the Spanish lace design. Now, markings are not always on the bottom of the vase or piece. You have to look around, get your magnifying glass out, and have a look. As you can see, let me see if I can focus. This marking is right there, and it, it's very difficult to read, and that says Fenton on it. So you have to get a magnifying glass and look all around your piece so you can identify it. Now, this vase, I know a lot of people are collecting the milk glass vases. Um, they're fun to collect, but there are a lot of vases in the milk glass like this, the bud vase, that are from a... Uh, flower shop. Uh, I used to work in a flower shop. I was a floral designer and we turned out tons and tons of those things with uh, fresh flowers. But uh, I only collect the ones that have the markings. And this one is uh, the Westmoreland Glass Company. And I will see if I can zoom in to try to show you the marking for Westmoreland. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. Let's see. Anyway, it's a W with a C over the W. So that's uh, Westmoreland Glass Company. Uh, I can usually tell by just looking at the vase if it's uh, a reproduction or an authentic piece because not all uh, of their pieces are marked. Okay, so then uh, I've got some of the bowls, the ruffled edge bowls that are by Hobnail or Fenton. Got a few of those. And then here's a basket. Now you can find some that are by, this one's by Fenton, but the Westmoreland uh, baskets, some of them have the split handle, so they'll have a split handle and join together in the middle. That's one of the ways of being able to tell as to who's the maker of the pieces. <clears throat> now, uh, I've got, let's see, uh, <laughs> I uh, now some of this I've brought over here from uh, other places in my house. I, I do collect the canisters by Fenton. Uh, love these; they're large. I think they're probably like a three or four quart size. They're very large, and I collect those as well. And then um, this bowl here. Let's see. This is the. Let me set up my camera again. So I don't get so shaky. This this bowl here is by Fenton, and it's uh, called a low-footed candy box. It's the hobnail, and it, this one has a different design than some of the other ones. I know I have seen some of these on. Uh, line uh, or on YouTube haul videos and these are awesome. These are, are um, a very collectible item. And then I'll just show you one of my uh, cake stands. I love to find different shapes of cake stands instead of just the round but uh, uh, the, the one
one back here is um, by Westmoreland and it's uh, excuse me it's by Fenton it's a diamond edged with rum well so uh, it has a I guess they after they made their cake and before they set it in their cake stand they filled the well with rum let me see and there you can see the it's a pretty deep well okay and then once again you can find the uh, <clears throat> the crested ware in just a plain design this one doesn't have anything on it but the uh, uh, silver crested top now down over here on this end I've got some Westmoreland pieces. <clears throat> this one here, let me see, it's hard to remember everything. I try to educate myself, but this is the beaded trim on the uh, Westmoreland piece. Uh, now, uh, the Westmoreland company closed in 1984 after changing hands uh, numerous times and the, with the war and the depression, it really took a toll on the company, and um, uh, so the company closed down in 1984, which is sad, but it's no longer produced, so these are one of a kind, really, if you're lucky to find them. Uh, they also made a hobnail, which is slightly different from the Fenton pattern. Um, uh, I don't have one here in front of me to show you, so uh, maybe I'll add a picture or or uh, show you that at, at a next video. And it was referred to as the English hobnail. <clears throat> and let's see, what else? Now, the Westmoreland Company, uh, before 1948, they did not have any markings. So if there's a marking on your piece, you will know that it was made after 1948. Now this one does have a marking on it. Let me see if I can find it. I, I was hoping to show you the mark. There it is. Very difficult to see. But let's see. see there I think you can just kind of barely see it so that's why it helps to have a uh, magnifying glass and both these two pieces are marked and they have the grape and leaf pattern I love the grape and leaf pattern especially when it has this uh, beaded trim around the uh, edge and then let's see here's another one of the silver crested bowls with just a plain a little bit smaller than the other one I showed you and then this here is uh, by Fenton and they refer to this as a mayo mayonnaise uh, dish so I hope that I've helped to identify some of your pieces uh, I like I said I have a, a lot of pieces of milk glass uh, some of the ones that I've recently purchased are the inexpensive ones, and they're made by uh, Anchor Hawking, and those are the pieces that I have uh, used for my candy station. And hopefully I'll be able to film that soon and give you some information on some of the... Uh, other pieces that uh, are very expensive uh, and are easy to find and collect. Now I want to show you a lamp since I showed you two of the hobnail lamps. Uh, here I want to show you one of my big lamps. So I'm going to move to another section in my dining room. Okay, here's this gorgeous lamp and I was able to find two of these on a trip that my husband and I were on to uh, Kansas several years ago and I went into an antique store and the lady had just put these out 
and uh, I got two of these lamps for $30, which was an awesome deal. And the top and the bottom do light up. Let me see if I can... I don't want to get in the picture. <laughs> There's that. Oh, my dogs are going crazy. And then you can get just the top to light up. Or the top and the bottom to light up. I have two of these. They're really, really big. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And I hope I've given you some insight as to some of your milk glass collection. And I'll plan on doing another video with some other pieces. Take care.